Hi, Matt Harlow from DJ Case. And today, Morgan Johnson, also a marketer from DJ Case, like myself, is going to talk to us about how you can use events to recruit hunters and anglers to your program. Take it away, Morgan. Thanks, Matt. Hi, everyone. My name is Morgan Johnson, and I'm an assistant engagement strategist with DJ Case and Associates. And today we're going to be talking about partners and recruiting events. So first, let's think about some potential hurdles to taking a hunting or angling class. So anytime you take a class, there are already some kind of things that might deter you or discourage you from taking a course. So just like any class, hunting and angling definitely has these hurdles. So some of these might be um, wondering how long it's going to take. You know, people have busy schedules and if it's a huge time commitment, they may not be willing to take time out of their schedule. They also aren't sure if they're going to be any good at it. Um, you know, taking any kind of course on a new skill is really intimidating. So they're not sure if they'll be good. They might not have any gear. It might be a little intimidating to know how much gear is out there and not knowing what you need specifically. Again, people are really busy. Um, they also might be afraid of certain things, um, different animals, afraid of the water, afraid of the woods, um, anything of that nature. And they also might not want to kill anything because it's gross or they're not sure if they'll want to eat it afterwards. So these are some things to keep in mind as you're thinking about your course for people. So let's go ahead and pause here and take a look at exercise one. So in this exercise, we would like you to list the hurdles that prevent you from attending an event or taking a class to learn a new skill or activity. And then think about one of your personas from the previous exercise. So what might prevent that individual from attending a hunting or angling class? And make sure you pick one that you would really like to target. So go ahead and pause this video, take a look at exercise one, and we'll see you in a minute. So there are ways you can overcome these hurdles in the development of your event. So for example, you want to make the event brief, simple, and fun. So these events, you know, obviously people want to go to something that won't take a lot of time. It's really simple to do. And of course, fun. You also want it to be non-threatening. So no risky activities that might deter people and add an extra layer of fear that they don't already have. And of course, the reason we're all here, we would like it to be outdoor and food oriented to attract these locavore kind of people. And you also want it to be an easy time and place for people to attend. You want people to be able to get there easily, maybe a you know locally recognized landmark or a recognized place and a convenient time for people to be able to, um, to attend the event. So for these recruiting events, your main goal is to collect contact information of potential hunting or fishing class participants. So these events, you don't want to recruit there. You want to recruit them later. So the goal for these events specifically is to get that initial interest, that list of contact information, so you can throw your efforts into recruiting later. The event kind of serves as a bait to attract these food-oriented individuals to spark that interest in order to encourage them to attend a class later. So your ideal recruiting event should be a single standalone event because you would like your class or your agency to be the recurring event. You want it to be fun and easy, of course. Um, one to three hours long, any more than that is quite a bit of a time commitment. So one to three hours is a good sweet spot. You would also like it to be co-branded by all partners involved. So we'll talk about partners in a little bit, but you want every agency, every organization to be represented. You would also need to tap into your partner's network to find attendees. So again, we'll talk about this in a moment, but getting that extensive network and um, contact information of those individuals is incredibly important. And you would also like to use your partner's expertise in their subject areas. They bring an extensive expertise to the table, so you would like to use that to your advantage. And of course, use your agency's expertise on hunting and fishing to supplement that knowledge. 
And of course, just like any good partnership, you want to share workflows between your partners and your agency as well. So a few years ago, um, DJ Case and Associates did a pilot survey with a few departments of natural resources. And in this survey, we asked what sustainable food oriented events would you like to attend? So this is some of, these are some of the results from that survey. Unanimously across the board, people loved the idea of attending an event about wild edibles. So foraging for mushrooms, berries, nuts, anything in the forest that you can get yourself. Second was wild fish or game tasting events. So kind of knowing what's in your area and sparking that interest in getting involved with foraging as well as you know, knowing what you can do on your own with the with this game. And another step to that is a wild fisher game cooking class. So having people able to come together and cook and understand not only how what species that you can eat, but how to prepare it as well. And quick in introductions to hunting and fishing. We're about 50-50, but there is substantial interest in getting that first introduction to those activities. Let's talk about partners for a minute. It's incredibly important to find the right partner when planning these events. The location of the partner should be central enough so that it's easy for people to attend. The attendees they generate should be your target audiences for your fishing or hunting classes. And they should have a good knowledge base, communication, and excitement for the event's topic itself. Just like any effective partnership, there should be a balance of benefits for both sides, a win-win situation. Um, so the partner would gain a reputation um, as you know, a, an expert in the field and kind of is enhanced by the event itself. And involving fish and or wild game, of course, adds fun and excitement. And then the agency gains exposure to new audiences, the partner's ability to attract participants to the event, the partner's skill and knowledge and the partner's location. So both sides kind of get a lot of benefits here. Let's talk about one kind of partner, skill and knowledge partners. So these partners offer an extensive knowledge base that would add credibility to your event as well as enhance the information attendees are receiving. So food oriented groups like food co-ops, farmers markets, chefs, etc., are great for kind of the food aspect of it. Stores that have things like sporting goods or bait are great for introducing people to the type of gear they need. Experienced hunters and anglers could be a great partner to give audiences firsthand accounts of the activities. And then of course, local organic farms or craft breweries that are already established within the community serve as a great resource and get people involved. So let's pause again here and take a look at exercise 2A about skill and knowledge partners. So we wanna list the types of companies and organizations you feel would make a good skill or knowledge partner for your look for program. And then make a list of businesses and organizations of each of the types you just listed in each of your target cities. We encourage you to use the internet to your advantage here, look what's in your community and start building that list of contacts. So again, take a moment, pause this video and we'll see you in a moment. Let's now look at some skill and knowledge event examples. So as we saw in our pilot survey, wild fish and game cooking classes are incredibly interesting for people. Um, you can give your attendees a hands-on experience by partnering with local chefs or cooking experts to give a class on huntable or fishable species. This can be hands-on or a demonstration or even a series of standalone events. At these cooking classes, you wanna encourage independent signups rather than groups so that you are getting that contact information like we mentioned earlier. You want it to be about two to three hours each. Again, any more than that um, is a huge time commitment. So this is a good sweet spot. And you want one type of meat or fish per event. So if you're doing a series of standalone sessions, have a different piece of meat featured at each one. 
and you would like to have an agency representative present to field questions, be a source of information, a contact person. Just remember that we are not recruiting at these events. We're using this to spark interest. We are recruiting later. So make sure your agency representative is aware of this. So let's look at some examples of skill and knowledge events. So kayak fishing or paddle boarding is paddleboard fishing is one of the fastest growing outdoor activities. So hosting an event, introducing people to it would gain a lot of attention. Even existing kayak kayakers will show interest as many existing kayakers become anglers. And partnering with a kayak shop or other entity that could provide gear could essentially improve their reputation and get their name out there. While the agency itself would gain potential attendees for a program as well as new licensed anglers. So as we talked about at the beginning, um, gear is a huge hurdle for people. They don't know, it's really intimidating going into a store like Cabela's and seeing all of this gear and not really knowing where, what you need or where to go. So um, newbies would need to learn this and know what gear they need in order to be prepared. So sporting goods stores like Cabela's and Bass Pro Shops can be excellent partners in gear events wherein um, attendees can learn about the gear involved in hunting or fishing and eliminating that knowledge barrier. So the retail partner gains a reputation as being an expert on the topic, new customers and new sales. And of course the agency gains a reputation for considering the new needs of new hunters and anglers, as well as new potential program participants as always. So let's pause again here, take a look at exercise 2B. And um, for this exercise, we would like you to list the types of skill or knowledge partners you wrote down in the previous exercise and list two types of events for each of those types of partners. And keep in mind, this is a balanced partnership. So um, what do you bring to this kind of partner and what does this kind of partner bring to you? So think about that. Um, so go ahead and do this exercise, um, take a moment, and we'll see you in a minute. So let's switch gears now and talk about social partners. So in, in addition to knowledge partners, social partners can offer great networking and pools of target audiences that event attendees can come from. So for example, we have chambers of commerce, uh, young professionals groups, civil organizations, college clubs, or even uh, out faith based organizations and organizations dedicated to diversity, such as outdoor Afro or Latino outdoors. Um, so these have great networking communities that you can pull from for your events. Um, so think about those kind of partners. So now let's pause a moment and look at exercise 3A. So for this exercise, we would like you to list the types of companies and organizations you feel would make good social partners for your local or program, and then make a list of businesses and organizations of each of the types you just listed in each of your target cities. So again, we encourage you to look this up online, see what's in your area, see what you can benefit from, and take a moment to do this, and we'll see you in a minute. So now let's talk about some uh, social event ideas. So as we saw before, wild game dinner tastings are a great kind of event because it not only provides attendees with an opportunity to sample the kinds of foods they can hunt and fish for, but also a chance to network and socialize with other people in their community who have similar interests. So after all, social support is incredibly important when starting a new activity. So these kinds of events are great for that. Um, so attendees can sample wild game or fish. It could be pre prepared in advance by a chef. Um, and it could even be prepared paired with a local wine or craft beer to encourage that kind of local community. And at these events, you would like to have an agency representative present to field questions and be that kind of contact person. But again, remember we are recruiting at these events. We are using this as an opportunity to spark interest and field questions. We are recruiting people for the class later. Another kind of social event can be a kayaking or hiking trip. Um, so 
They're great event opportunities to spark interest and a connection with the water and land. An agency representative would lead the trip and be able to point out hunting or fishing related information or locations when applicable. And it also provides an opportunity for attendees to network with each other, which would encourage them to start up new outdoor activities together. And as we saw from our pilot survey, foraging events for wild edibles are incredibly interesting for local war oriented people. It's a natural interest for anyone interested in local sustainable food. It's an easy first step rather than um, killing an animal. And it gets participants out into the woods and build that connection. And even many state or county parks already host foraging events. So you can use this to your advantage and um, use that as a great opportunity to build this. So let's pause again here, look at exercise 3B. For this exercise, we're going to list the types of social partners you wrote down in the previous exercise, and then list two types of events for each of those types of partners. So what do you bring to this type of partner? What does this type of partner bring to you? We want to make sure that is balanced. So take a moment and think about this, and we'll see you again in a minute. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for attending and we'll see you again in the next session.